Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss how to draw sin graphs. Now before you start the section you need to be okay with all your grade 10 work. So make sure that you went over the summary of the trig graphs in grade 10 before continuing the section. If you've got f of x is equal to a sin theta plus b. These adjustments have been taught in grade 10. We discussed it and you had learned that this would multiply with your y and this would add with your y. Now in grade 11 you are going to change that and your second change is going to be this. Now what you did in grade 10 it is very similar but the difference is I am now working with my x. Whereas in you had done an adjustment in grade 10 with y, you are now doing an adjustment with x. Okay, let us draw the following graph. First, you need to be sure that you know your mother graph. This is the mother graph of the sin graph. Now, the main points that we were discussing was all the red dots, which was if you take the original, we've got 0 and 0, 90 and 1, 180 and 0, 270 and minus 1, 360 and 0. You need to know your mother graph and you need to know your coordinates before you can continue. Okay, so when you start, okay, now if you are working and you know your mother graph, alright, you knew the separate coordinates. So let us take our x and our y value. Now, if we're starting from minus 360, you know we're moving in 90s. So, you know this, this is your mother graph that I'm talking about, right? And then we have for your sun graph. If I'm given the equation, f of x is equal to sin 2x. What am I doing? Now remember when you had done the functions, I had always told you that when we're working with x, we're always working with the opposite signs. So like when you were um, having x minus p, then you would tell me that the equation is x is equal to p. So the signs was always different. With trigonometry, it works exactly the same. The signs are usually the opposite of what it is written here. So if I'm timesing by d, it's like solving for x. If I'm timesing here, then the opposite would be divide. If you look at the relationship here, it is 2 times x. What am I going to do to my x value? I'm going to divide every one of them by 2. So where you had made an adjustment for y in grade 10, we are now making an adjustment for x in grade 11. Now what would our new coordinates for x be now? Minus 360 divided by 2 is minus 180. Here we'd have minus 135. Here we'd have minus 90. Here we'd have minus 45. 0 divided by 2 is 0. 90 divided by 2 is 45. 90, 135, and 180. So let us draw this graph. If you look at the lowest point and the highest point for x, it was only from minus 180 to 180. Now usually when they drawing this graph, they will give you a restriction. So they will say, listen, we want you to draw from minus 180 to 180. They don't always expect you to draw the entire graph. Sometimes they can tell you, listen, we only want you to draw from minus 90 to 90. So look at the information and then what they want you to draw, you draw and what they don't want, you don't draw. So let's do minus 180 to 180. Now remember, we are no more using this coordinate. We are now using the minus 180. So we have x is minus 180. If we fill in, we can go in 45s. Now, if you're looking at it and you'd say, but why did I go in 45s? Why didn't I go 90 and 180 and 270 and 360? You can also do that. But I feel when 
you've affected the x value then you should also affect the x axis because this affected the x value it divided the x value by 2 so if you look your original x axis was 90 180 270 360 so if you are dividing it by 2 then you must try and divide your x axis by 2 if you are multiplying by 2 then try and multiply your x axis okay now let us plot minus 180 and 0 we have minus 135 and 1 minus 90 and 0 minus 45 and minus 1 0 and 0 45 and 1 90 and 0 135 and minus 1 180 and 0 now if you are joining the dots what you would notice is that your original graph was going from minus 360 to 360 but now we've squashed it we like compress the graph and we're running from minus 180 to 180 now in your grade 10 work we usually squashed or moved this way we made it bigger or we made it smaller but in grade 11 we are working this way can you see the difference we are working horizontally now how would that affect us when you were in grade 10 we discussed amplitude and we discussed maximum or minimum what this does is it affects our period now what is a period a period is how long does it take your graph to go one complete cycle now in grade 10 it's always 360 degrees in grade 10 for sin it's 360 degrees for cos it's 360 degrees and for 10 it's 180 degrees but when you come to grade 11 then the period changes so the period now becomes your original but is it going to be divided by whatever number was there so I'm going to divide it by 2 so you see it's the original divided by whatever number is in your equation by the SD can you see that by the sin d now in this one your original is 360 degrees I'm going to divide it by 2 which means my period is 180 degrees now maximum and minimum is still the same domain and range is still the same so the main thing that you change is your period your amplitude is still the same but the thing that changes in grade 11 is your period now let us do the following graph okay it says f of x is equal to sin x minus 30 degrees now what is happening is that I am affecting my x but how so remember when you were doing parabola and hyperbola then we had x minus p and we'd always say x is equal to p when we affecting the inside its opposite sign so what am I doing is I'm actually adding 30 degrees so you're going to add 30 degrees to every point so remember you're still working with your mother graph you still have your mother graph but the difference is now we are changing the x value okay when they give you this graph they will give you a restriction so let us make our restriction minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees what does that mean that means I only want you to draw from minus 180 to 180 now if you look here I'm gonna end up with minus 330 here I'm gonna end up with minus 240 here I end up with minus 150 minus 60 30 120 210 300 and 390 now if they only want from minus 180 to 180 which means I'm going to start from here and I'm going to stop just past here they only want minus 180 to 180 so that is all you plot alright now when we're looking at our Cartesian plane 
in grade 11 when you're deciding how to draw your x-axis. Now the y-axis is not a problem. You know you can go up to the highest point which could be 3 and minus 3 but the x-axis becomes a problem. So when we're drawing the x-axis these are the two things you're going to decide. When they are fiddling with my b then you're going to say okay standardly I go 90 I go 180. Remember you only need the first point to decide how to draw your graph. Your first point is always going to be 90 divided by B. So now you know A, I must draw my graph according to 90 divided by B. That would give you your x-axis. So then that will help you along. So if you look at the first graph we did, right? You did 45 degrees. Now if you take the original point for the first one that you always work with, you can actually take any random point, but the first one is always the easiest. You worked with 90. Our B was 2. So 90 divided by 2 gave me 45 degrees. So you know A, I'm moving in points of 45 degrees, right? The second one you need to remember is, now you're going to have sin theta minus, let's say, D. All right? Remember these alphabets, A, B, C, D, you mustn't get comfortable with them. Nobody has a set uh, alphabet. I can use P, Q, R, S, somebody can use A, B, C, D. The place where it lives is important. So where it is is important. Not the alphabet that I am saying, okay? Because even in the exams, they change the alphabet. They give you P and Q, then they give you X and Y. So don't get attached to the alphabets, okay? Okay, so when you're working with D, try and work or make the x-axis the values of D. But let's say you're given two equations. So now, you confuse. Must I work on D or must I work on E? Let's say, for example, this is 30 degrees and then this is 45 degrees. Now you don't know, should I make it 45 degrees, should I make it 30 degrees? When you have a conflict, then try and find a common factor. Like here, you'll see 15 can go in both. Okay? What if you had something like this? If you had 30 and 60, then you can say, okay, listen, if I work in 30s, I'm going to get 60. So then you choose the, the 30. But remember, try and find a common one. If you had 30 and 45, you can't go in 30s because then you go in 30, 60, can you see you totally missed 45. But if you went in 15s, then you go 15, 30, 45, so it's easier to plot. So be careful when you're working with two graphs. If you have a conflict, then you must try and find a common factor, right? Like try and find something common between them. Now let's go back to this one. You see this one? moved by 30 degrees. So instead of now making my standard change 90, 180, 270 or even making it um, 45, 90, try and work with 30s. Remember I'm doing it freehand, you need to use a ruler, okay? So you can say okay one centimeter for each plot or whatever but you cannot just do it freehand. Okay, now you can work on 30s because this specific one was 30. But look at what is important. If you look, why did I stop at 180 degrees? Here it stops at 150. And here it stops at 120. But look, I went on to 180 degrees. The reason you go on is because they had given you a restriction. So you need to make sure that you follow their restriction. If you go over on your number line, let's say you drew here, 210 negative and you continued here and you said okay 210 but you don't draw there it's fine you can have it on your number line but you can't draw in this area as soon as you cross over here and you start drawing over this 180 line or you start drawing over this 180 line you got it wrong they're going to penalize you so let us plot what they gave us right we have 0 and minus 150 so it's minus 150 degrees your x is minus 150, remember that was based on our adjustment. And then we have 0 as my y. The next point is x is minus 60, y is minus 1. So we have a point around there. Okay, then we have x is 30 and y is 0, which is exactly there. Then we have x is 120 and y is 1. Now if you draw here, now look, 
even though you draw the graph you haven't complied with what they say they say listen we want you to go to minus 180 and we want you to go to 180 so they want you to go from minus 180 till 180 now how do you decide hey now where do I put this dot do I put it here do I put it here where do I put that dot so you use your calculator you see this is our x value so we're gonna go f of minus 180 degrees in your calculator you're gonna press sin minus 180 degrees minus 30 and see what your calculator gives you it gives you at 0 comma 5 so what you do is you make a dot on minus 180 and 0 comma 5 and you extend your drawing but then you stop you don't go further then you're going to do the same thing at this point so here we're going to say f of 180 degrees is equal to sin 180 minus 30 and you press that in your calculator and you would get 0 comma 5 so you continue and you put a dot around 0, 0,5 and then you continue your graph. Now that excess part, that red part, is not in your table. Okay, that you have to continue and do that. Now in your schools, a lot of teachers are teaching you how to do this in your calculator. So you put in graphs and you put in the points and, and then whoops, all these coordinates come up. Okay. If you have no intention of going to university, you can do that. But number one, you don't understand what's happening. So it is advisable that you do this first and you learn it this method before you go and get calculator friendly. If you're not going to university, go ahead. If you have no plans to go there, then go ahead. Then learn the calculator. But then be careful with your steps in your calculator, okay? And be careful with your starting and ending points. and. Uh, be careful with simple things. Simple things can throw your entire graph out. Okay? So it's advisable that you first learn this before you continue. Okay, thank you for watching.